In the middle of the 19th century, people were fleeing from hunger and poverty. 150 years earlier, there were other reasons to immigrate. The people who undertook the long journey back then hoped to be able to freely practice their religion in America. In Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, they wanted to live their lives undisturbed. Since most religious refugees could not afford the crossing, they relied on the so-called redemption system. In America, they had a week to find a relative or an employer who would pay off their debt, which the captain recorded with great precision on a ship's passenger list like this one. Whoever was not able to pay within the period stipulated was put up for auction as a laborer and had to pay off the trip as an indentured servant. Those available for sale were featured in advertisements like white slaves. Rich Yankees thought highly of the Germans. They had a good reputation as craftsmen, farmers, soldiers. They could be held as indentured servants for terms of four to eight years. Three quarters of the Germans who came to America in the 18th century came on terms of indentured servitude. In 1683, two hours away by foot from Philadelphia, the German Pilgrim Fathers founded Germantown, the first real German settlement on American soil after the few who came to Jamestown in 1608. For more than 200 years, Germanopolis, as the city was originally called, was a stronghold of German-American lifestyle and culture. With the passage of time, the Germans have moved away. Only street names recall the founders. The Mennonite Pastorius, or the scientist Rittenhouse. Innumerable churches and prayer halls of the Anabaptists, Mennonites, and Quakers line the main street and testify to the beliefs of the devout pioneers. Today, new immigrants populate Germantown and hold services in the Church of the German Brethren, a group of Anabaptists. The vast legacy of the pioneers is preserved here at the German Society of Pennsylvania. Along with their religious zeal, the Germans were heavily drawn to the printing trades. Soon, they published their own newspapers, calendars, and religious almanacs. In Germantown, Christoph Sauer published the first German Bible on American soil, using the old Fraktur type style. It can still be found today in the homes of the old settler families. For some people, Germantown became too worldly, and so Conrad Beisel, an Anabaptist, founded a Protestant cloister in Ephrata. The daily schedule was strictly controlled. Only a few hours of sleep on hard plank beds were allowed. Prayer and hard work were the order of the day, interrupted only by church services and hymns. Surrounding the cloister in Lancaster County are the farms of the Amish and the Mennonites, who for 250 years have unwaveringly led their modest lives according to the traditions of their German founders. Many immigrants were afraid that the culture of their homeland might die out in America. A society in Philadelphia therefore decided to found Hermann as a stronghold of Germanness one in which they could lead normal lives unmolested by the English-speaking majority. Hermann was planned to be the biggest city in America. Market Street here is 10 feet wider than the one back in Philadelphia.
Many can speak English and want to, though in the purely German settlements, they don't need to. Their peculiarities arouse suspicion, but also admiration from their English-speaking neighbors. The German farmers work differently from their Anglo neighbors. Since arable land in Germany was scarce, they cultivated the soil with a thought for the longer term, using green manure and increasing the yield through crop rotation. In comparison, Anglo-American farmers tended to sell their land as soon as the yield dropped. They preferred to move on and begin anew someplace else. 